Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with another video. Hope this finds everyone well and in good spirits. So, video's coming out today on Sunday. Uh, I was traveling this week for the holidays, as I'm sure many of you were as well. And I sincerely hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving if you celebrated it. So, let's get right into the gear for today. We are going to be continuing with the Boelis, uh Panama 1924 soap. I've loosely decided that I'm going to try to 3019 the soap, which is uh, Badger and Blade Badger and Blade meme, which basically means that you use it until it's done. And we've got some progress going here. Uh, it was only maybe a little over two ounces to begin with, so it's not like I have you know a bunch of room to go. And we are continuing on that trio of brushes that were sent to me by a good friend. Thank you very much again. And today we're gonna to be talking about a synthetic brush from Paladin. So I have never used a Paladin brush before. This, this will be my first time. And it's interesting that this time it's with a synthetic knot. So from what my friend told me, um, this is a 26 millimeter knot. It's the third batch of synthetics that Paladin has put out. So for that reason, they call this a B3. This is the first one that looks like a two band badger as the first two batches looked more like a three band. And this is a uh, Chief Moon Glow. I don't know, I, maybe Chief is the shape and Moon Glow is the type of pour or something, but uh, it's a good looking brush. Um, it's not wild or crazy or anything, but um, I do think it's a handsome brush and uh, the shape has been kind of nice to use too. So um, anyway, that's the brush, Paladin, uh, for the first time here on this channel. And then for the razor, we're going to be returning to the Ever Ready Streamline. Um, I'll be talking more about this razor again as we go, but um, still think that this is just one of the most elegant, um, beautiful safety razors of any kind that I've ever seen. So I'm thankful to have uh, so many of these in my collection now. Let's get right into the shave, shall we? Let's get some water into this brush. And then we'll begin to load. We'll get some water on the face too, or not? Shake out most of the water, and um, this does uh, kind of clump up a little bit for a synthetic knot. It reminds me of the Chubby Two synthetic from Simpsons, but I like this one more. But it does kind of have that uh, clumpy look, if that interests you. Um, this brush retails over $100, and for me, it's not quite worth it, but if you're a big Paladin fan, or you're a big fan of these types of synthetic knots, well, then maybe it might be worth it to you. Um, again, the Boelis is just, uh, it's kind of like Cella on steroids, if you will, a nice uh, almond sort of scent, and it's very easy to use, simple kind of tallow-based soap formula, and I'm just loading like I hate it today because why not? You certainly don't need it with the synthetic, but as I jokingly now say, um, overloading, it's what most of us uh, YouTube shavers like to do. So we got the brush loaded up and let's go into the face lather. And there goes one drop. <laughs> so in terms of the feel of this brush, um, got a decent amount of backbone. You can see how it's, you know, moving my skin around a little bit when I splay the brush, but it's not as stiff as the Trafalgar T3, also from Simpson that I used not too long ago. Um, however, it's still a little stiff for my preferences. I'm not sure if it's the loft. I mean, it's probably the loft, right? Um, that's something I learned uh, messing around with different synthetics maybe a year or so ago, is that the fibers themselves are not terribly different uh, as compared to, you know, natural hair brushes, where there can be a lot of variety in the kind of the natural hair. But um, with these, it's more just about the loft that you set the knot at. And the other stuff is just more about, you know, how dense the knot is rather than the, you know, particular quality of the synthetic hairs. So yeah, it's just a little too stiff for me, but um, 
it definitely works, gets the job done. I've used worse brushes in my time, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Um, I do sort of have the opinion that from a totally practical standpoint, synthetics really are the best way to go. Um, they just do a great job at making lather and um, they're cheap, easy to use. But, you know, this is maybe one of the few times where I use two brushes back to back. So like last week I was using the um, uh, brush from Vault, right? The J2 Knot, the dense uh, 27 millimeter badger brush. Okay. Well, that was funny. First time I think ever on one of my videos where I had a, a long go off in the middle of the video um, because of the travel, my uh, sleep schedule is a little messed up still. And so, um, yeah, there was an alarm that went up. So sorry about that. I was just saying how um, I like the J2 more from, from last week, basically. Like, usually I'll give the nod to the synthetics just from a practicality standpoint. But this is one of those cases where that J2 brush just feels so much better um, in use, you know, compared to the synthetic. Anyway, uh, I'm going to get this razor warmed up here. It's got a gem. PTFE blade with, I don't know, five uses or something on it. And let's go here with the first pass. And that is a lovely sound. For most people, anyway. Um, this week during my travels, um, I was using a Gillette Super Adjustable, some, some of you may know it as the Black Beauty, and uh, for some reason that's become my travel, ra uh, travel razor, and uh, I do enjoy that. Mine uh, was a gift from a friend, and it's got the short, the shorter handle, which was less common um, compared to the others, or compared to the usual kind of long one. And, um, yeah, that's probably my favorite adjustable that I use. However, how can you beat, uh, the sound of this cutting? Mm. Uh, we're dealing with two days growth as usual. And, um, yeah, it's good to be back home. I used to travel, why well, don't say travel, well, I was on the road, you know, a couple years ago, pretty much full time, you know, going from town to town, and I really enjoyed that, you know, I feel like if you're going to have some kind of uh, job where you travel that much, You have to enjoy traveling. I mean, you certainly can't hate it because you're just always on the move, right? So, which is all to say that I do enjoy traveling, but there's something nice about coming home too. You can hear the airplanes flying overhead. Last night I noticed, I was sitting in my living room, if I have the middle blind and the window open or up, I could see planes going west toward the airport like every five minutes. I had never really noticed that before that they go by so often. Um, anyway, okay, that was good first pass. We'll rinse and come back in for pass number two in just a moment. Okay, let's go for pass number two here. Okay, here's a second pass with the Streamline to talk about it for a second. It's kind of aggressive. I know some people find it maybe borderline harsh, but I've never felt that way. Um, and again, I'm a little biased because I've enjoyed most every um, gem razor that I've ever tried. 
So, you know, when people ask me, hey, I want to try a single edge for the first time, would you recommend? I mean, I do have my usual ones that I recommend, like, uh, you know, any 1912 variety, the clog proof. But then when they start asking me, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Um, and they get into other models, um, it can be difficult for me to give a, you know, strong opinion because number one, I just like most of them. And then number two, because of my ridiculous uh, number of razors that I own, um, it's been, you know, a long time since I've used some of those razors. And so it's possible that my opinion of them would be different now since my technique has changed a little bit, certainly. But yeah, I think this is a great razor. I think it's one of those that you have to be um, attracted to the look of it a little bit before you try one out or think about buying one. Um, because they are kind of expensive, you know. Um, is it worth, in terms of shave quality alone, is it worth, you know, however much more than it would be just to get a 1912? No. But you're paying a little bit for the aesthetics as well. And uh, to be fair, the prices of these have gone down a little bit um, since I first started tracking them, you know, last year or something. So now is kind of a good time to buy and not to plug myself too much here. But if you're ever looking for a vintage razor, let me know. I might be able to help you out. I'm always getting stuff in, buying and selling, you know. Um, I never want to feel like I'm trying to sell things to you all. But then I hear, like as recently as maybe a week or two ago, I heard about a fellow YouTuber who bought a vintage razor and... Um, he told me how much he paid for it <laughs> and I said, man, you should have bought it from me. I would have sold it to you for half. Um, so anyway, just keep that in mind. Okay. We're going to do rinse and then come back in for the final third pass. Stay tuned. Okay. Here we go. Final third pass. Oh, here's a third pass for the streamline and for a professional update. Uh, surprisingly, this was a busy week um, in terms of planning for the future. Um, w the wedding scene work is definitely slowing down for me as we come into the end of the year. And so usually what we do during this time is we would try to make up for that for kind of trying to get some like holiday gigs, playing Christmas parties and things like that. Um, or what we do is we start, you know, booking for the spring basically. And so that's what I've kind of been doing um, in the past week. Um, I have two things coming up that are, well, not coming up, but next year, um, in the early part of the year that are both kind of one-off gigs, as we call them. Um, so one-off gigs are always interesting because you maybe haven't developed a rapport with those musicians very much, you know, if you've never played with them before and then this is your first time versus, you know, that's different than like a steady gig where you play the same venue, you know, twice a month and you can kind of build up a sense of camaraderie with your bandmates. So anyway, just have a couple of one-off things coming up next year. And um, both are going to be travel gigs too, which is fun. Um, as I said, I do like to travel and uh, traveling for work for me is a good thing because then I don't have to pay for the travel, right? So I got a little bleeper right here.
but yeah, so that's coming up. Kind of, again, it, it'll be pretty slow. from here to the end of the year, but that's okay. Because it was a really busy year and um, it seems like next year is gonna be just as busy. Picked up a Christmas Eve Eve gig, <laughs> gig on the 23rd of December. I don't know if I've ever played that close to Christmas before. Um, not because I don't want to, but usually, um, traveling, visiting friends, family, and so if I'm away from home, even if I did, you know, have a gig offered to me, I wouldn't be able to take it. So this year I'm in a strange thing where I will be home for a couple days, um, at the end of December, and uh, yeah, Christmas Eve Eve, that's what I'm gonna call that gig. I don't know if the band leader wants me to say that, but anyway, I'll be saying it. Okay, that feels pretty good. Um, gonna come back, uh, rinse, and we'll talk about post shaving in just a second. Hang in there. Okay, we're back, and because this is not like a super fatted soap, the uh, Panama 1924 uh, does rinse very cleanly and it feels like squeaky clean, which <laughs> is kind of funny. So today for a post shave, I decided to bring it out on the cold weather, House of Mammoth Mood Indigo. Um, so I've reviewed this uh, probably, it's been maybe a year since I've used this, which is crazy. And um, yeah, this is a beautiful blueberry rum night sky kind of scent. And you know what, this is gonna be too much. So let's see if I can't rinse off a little bit. Um, yeah, this is a this is a very dense balm, kind of based on the um, Nivea um, aftershave balm, which is one that I used for a long time before converting to the artisan stuff. And um, let's apply some now. Mm. So this is a very, um, it's not overly boozy from the rum or anything, but the um, blueberry, Is a wonderful uh, kind of top note and uh, yeah I just really enjoy the scent and I know I've got some other friends who also very much enjoy it so it's great to return to this uh, the name of it of course is the Duke Ellington song Mood to Go and if I may I must correct our dear friend Ben um, he says that it's a blues song by Duke Ellington but it's a jazz song that is bluesy we we would say um, like in order to call it a blues song, it would have to be by like a blues artist, B.B. King or just someone like that. But this is by a jazz artist that sure it has blues elements, but eh, it's really a jazz song. So Ben, if you're listening, um, can you say it's a jazzy blues song? Is that too much? Or sorry, a bluesy jazz song? Could, could you write something like that? That's my musician, uh, request for you. Okay. So that's mood indigo. Beautiful tune. If you've never heard it, check it out. It's like probably one of the most iconic uh, jazz songs <laughs> of the 20th century, really. Okay, let's do a final recap. So we use Mood Indigo. We use the Everready Streamline. Um, I still have to make my video about that um, where I talk about the different styles. Um, I'm waiting on one more razor to arrive. And then once I have that, I think I'll be able to do the video. So fingers crossed that'll be out by the end of December, let's say. Here's the Paladin Moonglow Chief 26 millimeter B3 synthetic. I think I got all the buzzwords in there. Um, not a bad brush by any means. I think there definitely is a market for people who want these kind of more premium looking synthetic brushes. However, that market is not me, <laughs> uh, just to be honest. And then we are using the Boelis, uh Panama 1944. So thank you all if you made it this far. Again, hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving if you celebrated it. And uh, it's crazy, you know, the end of the year is coming around really soon. So let's try to make it to the end all in one piece. And uh, I hope everybody has a great week coming up. Okay, so thank you all so much for watching. This has been HG Shaves. We'll see you again next time. Goodbye.